service in praise of the Holy Spirit. Today is Pentecost Sunday. My name is Fred Kilner, Rural Dean of St Ives, and our preacher is Archdeacon Hugh McCurdy. We praise God in words taken from Psalm 104. O oh Lord my God, how great you are, beautifully, gloriously robed. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. What a wildly wonderful world, O oh God! You made the earth overflow with your wonderful creations. When you hide your face, they are afraid. When you take away their breath, they die. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. We pray together a prayer at the start of this service for the sending of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God our Father, for sending your Holy Spirit to guide and strengthen us, to guide us into your truth, to inspire us as we read your word, and to love and serve the Lord Jesus, your word revealed among us. Amen. St Paul wrote, that the gift, best gift of the Holy Spirit is love. So we sing together asking for that love to be with us. After the hymn, we shall hear of the coming of the Holy Spirit to the disciples in the upper room. Acts chapter 2 and verses 1 to 6. And it's going to be read by Mike Boyles, followed by the sermon by Archdeacon Hugh McCurdy, and then in response, our confession of faith. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. This is the word of the Lord. I don't know what you've been doing during this period of lockdown, but one of the things we've been doing is going through cupboards and wardrobes, uh, tidying, sorting, uh, with the intention of getting rid of quite a lot of stuff, downsizing. It's been a good experience, and yet at times it's also been rather strange. Particularly as I was going through some of the things in my wardrobe, uh, I was rather reluctant to get rid of some of the T-shirts and shirts. Though they were certainly past their best, I wanted to hold on to them. They were familiar. They were comfortable. Uh, they had associations with uh, happy days, uh, whether on the beach with the children or elsewhere. They were symbolic of something. And yet I didn't need them anymore. So eventually they went on the pile of stuff to go to the charity shop or the recycling centre. Today, in our readings is the day of Pentecost. We've had the shortened version uh, because of this Zoom uh, conference and facility. Uh, and so I hope afterwards you'll be able to look through the rest of the chapter, chapter two in particular, Peter's sermon. But we've selected the first few verses because they are so familiar and the story is also familiar. How on that day of Pentecost when Jerusalem was filled uh, with people coming to celebrate one of the three great Jewish festivals. The disciples, 120 of them, were meeting in 
the upper room, most likely. Luke doesn't tell us that in this chapter. The same upper room that the disciples had met with Jesus at the Last Supper. The same upper room as in Acts chapter 1, when just before the ascension, Jesus tells them to wait until uh, the promise of the Father comes. And now we find them waiting. Waiting in that time before Pentecost, after ascension. They must have debated what on earth they were waiting for. How would they know the promise of the Father? What was this Holy Spirit? Would they recognise him or her? or How would they know? They prayed. They were faithful. And then on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came, filling the room with the sound like wind, with the fire, both wind and symbol, fire symbols of God's presence, the breath of God, breathing new life, the fire cleansing, holiness, the presence of God. And then the gift of languages, languages that those country folk surely could not have known, did not know. Language of heaven and the language of the nations. The Holy Spirit was enlivening, quickening, animating the people of God. Many people have seen this as a reversal of the story in Genesis about the Tower of Babel, when the people were all one, spoke one language, moved as one people. And they decided in the story to create a city and to build a tower that would stretch up to heaven and stretch to God. And God in his judgment scatters the people, sends them hither and thither and creates different languages. So division is there. And here on this day of Pentecost, the reversal is true. The people come together, people of diverse backgrounds, of languages, of genders, of understandings. They come together on this day of Pentecost and hear what God is doing. A great reversal, as God is always about. Now as to those gifts, the wind, the flame, the tongues. One commentator has said this, the wind and the fire were abnormal and probably the languages too. New life, joy, fellowship, worship, freedom, boldness and power were not abnormal. They were the marks of the church. They are the marks of you and I, of new life, of joy, of fellowship, of worship, even in these abnormal COVID times, we can still meet, praise God, and we know that he is at work amongst us. Now that's where our reading stops. And as I said, I hope you'll look at the rest of the chapter, because this is not a sort of privatised religion. This is not something that is to be kept and held on to. The power of the Holy Spirit animates the people of God. And so the 120 spill out onto those crowded streets of Jerusalem. And the gift of language is there for all to hear. So much so that the crowds have gathered from all parts of the known world. So how can these simple country folk be speaking our language. How can we understand them? Others thought they were drunk. And so Peter, seeing this confusion, this bewilderment, stands up to speak. He was able to tell them that they had received power when the Holy Spirit came upon them and that they would be witnesses to the things of God in Jerusalem now at this very moment in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, the prophecy fulfilled that was given in chapter 1 verse 8. 
the church together, propelled out onto the streets, out of those places of comfort, of familiarity, out to proclaim the good news. I'm sure they couldn't have imagined not only that day of Pentecost, but was also would lie ahead. How daily numbers would come and join their number, become part of the church. How the church would grow in confidence. How people of all sorts and backgrounds would come to know Jesus as the one who gave them hope and freedom and love and life. They couldn't have imagined that on that day of Pentecost, nor could they have imagined the persecution that was to come, how they would be scattered among Judea and Samaria. How the person who was often at the heart of that persecution, at least in its early days, Saul, would himself be converted and would join them and become a great leader in the church along with Peter and the other disciples. How the gospel would be preached in Europe, in North Africa, to the ends of the earth. They couldn't have imagined those things, nor could they have imagined the early church fathers, the monastic communities, the monastic monks who brought with them to these shores the gospel, the growth of, the, of Christendom of the kingdom of God expressed in cathedrals and churches that we still worship in today. None of that was imaginable, but God was at work and God is still at work. On this day of Pentecost, when we meet separately in our homes, when our buildings are shut and we wonder what the future will hold, it is good to hold on to the fact that God is sovereign. This is his church and he is doing new things. Peter, the expression, the very expression of the generosity of God, of sharing the story of what God was doing with others, with those who'd persecuted Jesus, who'd nailed him to the cross. Peter shared the story. Peter shared the story with the Multitudes gathered there, the generous, visible people of Jesus Christ, out and about in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And we are the beneficiaries. We are the inheritors. And we, as the generous people of Jesus Christ, are still called to be out and about, of inviting others to share what we have discovered for ourselves to discover that new life and empowering work of the Spirit who propels us out. As we come in Ramsey, in Upwood, in Ramsey St Mary's to prepare for Ian's arrival, we know that God is still at work, that God will work through us if we allow him and that he will shape us to be the people not for the past, but for the future. Taking the best of the past and leading us into new places. Our temptation is always to stick with what is comfortable and with what is familiar. But sometimes those things have to be put away. And we allow the Spirit to lead us on into a new adventure. That's the day of Pentecost. That's the day of Pentecost for us today. God is at work in his church. May he bless us, empower us, protect us and enable us to be faithful, generous witnesses to him in this generation and in the generations to come. Amen. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, 
who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. We seek the help of the Holy Spirit in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. We pray that each one may be filled with the Holy Spirit as we respond after, Come, Lord, and bless us with the fire of your presence with and fill us with your transforming spirit. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the power and wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask that through that power and wisdom we may be strengthened to understand your will for our lives and to live out your will. We pray for all who have earthly power, both at national and international level, that they might, with their authority, also have your wisdom to use it for the good of all. Come, Lord, and bless us with the fire of your presence and fill us with your transforming spirit. Generous Creator, we thank you for the gifts of your creation, for the earth's resources, and ask for the desire and the wisdom to share them fairly. Through your spirit at work in us, may there be loving and practical concern for those who have little. We thank you for all who work to bring healing and wholeness to those who are ill, physically, mentally and spiritually. And ask for healing, especially for those recovering from COVID-19 and its effects on their lives. We pray for those who mourn the deaths of loved ones without the help of expected funeral or memorial services. 
and ask for the peace, comfort and healing of your spirit. Come, Lord, and bless us with the fire of your presence and fill us with your transforming spirit. Loving Lord, we thank you for the gifts your Holy Spirit waits to breathe into us. Without your gifting, we can do nothing. Come, Lord, and bless us with the fire of your presence and fill us with your transforming spirit. We pray that you would give gift to Ian Osborne, our rector-designate, for all that is necessary for his ministry among us, that together we might the more show that Jesus is living in us as we go about our daily lives. Come, Lord, and bless us with the fire of your presence and fill us with your transforming spirit. Jesus said to his disciples, I will not leave you as orphans. And St Paul wrote of the Spirit, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive doesn't make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you've received brought back your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And as God's children, we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This, of course, is Pentecost and traditionally a time when we would normally receive communion. However, we commit ourselves to Jesus within our hearts by recalling, as we would at the Eucharist, what he's done for us and renewing our response to him and seeking to be equipped for whatever he asks of us. The picture behind me is by Siga Koda, and the copy was given me by a pastor from the German Lutheran Church who was a pastor in the northern village of Broderup. It was used that year in all the churches, the Lutheran churches in that diocese, as a help for prayer during Lent. Paul wrote, There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. And so we bring before God our need for forgiveness and renewal as we say together, Lord Jesus Christ, crucified and ascended for us, we have not loved you as our Redeemer, nor obeyed you as our Lord. We have not brought our prayers to you, nor heeded your tears shed over the world. Forgive us, we pray. Breathe into us your Holy Spirit, and make us joyfully obedient to your will, for your glory's sake. Amen. And may the Lord forgive you by the death of his Son. Restore by his grace his own image within you. May he give you the sorrow that heals and the joy that praises. 
and fill you afresh with his Holy Spirit, that you may take your place among his people in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And in response, we say together, Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits that you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And we continue saying, Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others and for myself, and keep me in your care. Amen. And so the collect for this festival of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, gift of the Father, pour out afresh the fullness of your gifts. Renew the face of the earth and revive your people with the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So be at peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.